بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد I hope brothers everybody is able to hear الحمد لله رب العالمين شو استاد الاسم إن شاء الله So in, as we all know that, alhamdulillah, every week we have one uh, hadith from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which we study one of the amal, one of the deeds which wipes away our sins, subhanAllah. So this week, this is the hadith. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, say Ameen, when the Imam says Ameen. For if anyone's utterance of Ameen synchronizes with that of the angels, he will have his past sins forgiven. SubhanAllah. So every time we go for salah and the Imam says, Ameen, we should try to say Ameen along with him. Bismillah ta'ala, our uh, Ameen will synchronize with the Ameen of Imam and Bismillah ta'ala, all our sins will be forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the tawfiq and give you the tawfiq, brothers. This is a reminder first for myself and then for your brothers. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. Okay. Coming to our lesson now. So all of this we have done before. I think it's so solid. Alhamdulillah, we don't need to go through that. We'll move on to the next screen, inshallah. So when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the expelled from his mercy. Who can tell me, brothers, between the surahs, do we recite al-astad or al-astad and basmala both? And even we're finishing one surah, starting another surah. This is this is every time happens when we are reciting the Quran. Like if you're in Juz Amma, then surahs are very short. So you finish one surah, start in the surah. Brothers Shohaib, Basmala, Brother Iftikhar, Basmala, Brother Sadat, Basmala only, Mashallah Tabarakallah, Brother Fadil, Muhammad Faisal, Mashallah Tabarakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your knowledge, my brothers. Mashallah, this is correct answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran Quran and recite the Quran with tartil. Ali radiallahu ta'ala who explains this is tajweedul huruf and ma'rifatul wuquf. Ma'rifatul wuquf is to know where to stop and tajweedul huruf is the articulation points, the house of the letters and the sifat. Yani how do they look like? We've done all of this, alhamdulillah. How many articulation points are there in the mouth, brothers? How many major areas of articulation are there? Not articulation points, major areas. Five, five, mashallah, tabarakallah, brother, Muslim Shabdi, brother, Suhaib. Okay, and this is, we have seen before, it's very important for the letter that we take the letter out from its own house. If we knock somebody else's house, then somebody else will come. These are the five areas, mashallah, you all answered correctly. Al-halq, al-lisan, al-shafatain, al-jawf, al-khayshum, yani throat, tongue, Lips, a empty mouth, empty area of mouth and uh, throat and nasal passage. Then we have done that there are, okay, we've done this, we clearly understand this. Alhamdulillah, everybody understands that the major areas are five. And in those major areas, there are small, small areas in which the letters are living. So throat, there are three small areas, tongue, there are 10, lips, there are two, empty mouth, one and nasal passage, one, where the numbers written, the green uh, circles are the letter of letters number of letters throat the three part of throat axal halq wastul halq adn al halq from there hamza hamza ha ayn ha ghayn kha comes and then we moved to And we've also seen that the practice can be done by putting Hamza before the letter, as you can see in the example on the screen. Here you go. So you say, Agh, Igh, Ugh, wherever your sound stops, this is the place from where you are pronouncing. Now, maybe I'm pronouncing Agh from some place else. So when I say Agh, Agh, you see, I'm saying Agh, I'm not saying Agh, Agh. And I realize, I think, where did my tongue stop when I said that? And I see, did it stop at the place it should? Ugh, ugh, ugh. No, it did not. I had to be raising my tongue from the back, whereas I have raised from so not from the back, but between the middle and back. That's why the sound was different. So I'll try once again and say, ugh, ugh. Oh, yes, this time my tongue is at the correct place. So Alhamdulillah, my pronunciation is correct. Ugh, 
And then we saw the tongue. Tongue has got 10 points, as the brother said, and uh, there are 18 letters. Those who come from tongue, aqsal lisani, lower tongue, middle tongue, side of tongue, tip of the tongue, and head of the tongue. Cough and cough. And we said before as well, many, many times, it is important for us to memorize the seven mighty letters, seven heavy letters, which are khusra, dirtun, qith, because if you don't know, Look at this. This is one example of what can happen. This is cough. This is heavy letter. But this is cough. Very near. Look at this cough and this cough. This cough and this cough. They share the makhri. They're very close. But if, if we don't make this cough heavy, we will somewhat pronounce this cough. So we will say qalb means um, heart. We will say, we will make it kalb, which means dog. Kul means to say. Kul is a command, say. But if we say kul, it's a command to eat. SubhanAllah, how can we make this kind of mistake? It's very imperative that we all know those seven letters. Khusra, virgh, kun, qirgh. Okay. From the middle of the tongue, yani from the middle part of the tongue, three letters comes. Jeem, sheen, and ya. Aj, ash, ay. And these are the name of the teeth. We have 32 teeth in our uh, mouth, 60 on the top side, 60 on the lower side. We've gone through the names of it last time. From the side of the tongue, only one letter comes. This is vod, 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 od, id, od. This is how it comes. And then we've done tip of the tongue from where lam, noon, and ra comes. This is lam. We said, there are seven heavy letters, but Lam is also heavy sometimes with the condition if Lam, if we are saying the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Lam will be heavy, but the condition is that before that Lam, it has to be Fatha or Dhamma, otherwise it will be light. So once again, Kitabullahi, Rasulullahi, Rasulullahi, Kitabullahi, Baytullahi. So it's all heavy, but for the light one, the example is Bismillahi. Lillahi, fi sabilillah, fi sabilillah. So this is all light because uh, before the name of uh, Ismu Jalala, before Ismu Jalala, there was a kasara. And this is uh, noon. Noon, we said noon has got two makhrits. Half of it comes from the mouth and half of it comes from where? Half of it comes from the nose. So this was noon. This is raw. Once again, we said there are only seven letters which are heavy, but I just mentioned Lam can sometimes be heavy, can sometimes be light. That's why we did not count them into the letters which are always heavy. Ra is also something, some letter which is sometimes heavy, sometimes light. When Ra has got Fatha or Zabar at the top or Dhamma, any page at the top, it will become heavy. If there's a Kasara underneath, it will become light. So, for example, Astaghfirullah, Firu, 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 it's not. Firu, it's not Firu, it's not Astaghfiru, it's Astaghfirullah. So there's a Dhamma for, Masalan, Rasulullah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman. These are all heavy rods. For Muraqqaqa, uh, 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 the thin one, the empty mouth one, maybe for example could be Fir'aun or the Kalima Rihla. Rehla, we didn't say Rehla, we said Rehla because there's a Kasara underneath. This is how we practice our ear or, and we said Ra has got a Takrir, Takrar in it, a repetition. If we don't control it, we will not say one Ra, but rather we will say many Ra like this. Ar, 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 you see Ar, this Takrar, Ar, Ar, it should not be like that. You should not just keep it, the gap between the tongue and the palate should not be too much. And you should also not touch it to the palate. There should be just a little bit gap, as you could see on the left hand side. Yeah. So if there's a little gap, then the takrar, the repetition, inshallah, will not be there. And bismillah ta'ala, it will be like Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, inshallah. So we have spoken about it when the ra is murakkaka and it could be mukhafama and it could be heavy, it could be light. So how do we make letter light, my brothers? Who can tell me? If somebody is making a mistake and you want to advise them and they say, I don't know how to make letter light. This is how I speak. I have no idea. What suggestion would you give them? To do what? To make their letter light. So if somebody is in the habit of speaking like ba, 
פה, מה, מה, בא, יש משהו על הטבעה הכלל. We will ask them to smile and then say, so when, when they're saying, בא, פה, and if we, פה, if, if they say, we smile, בא, תא, תא, ג'א, you see the letter not only becomes, uh, thin, it becomes empty mouth, it also becomes beautiful because everything comes solid. If you don't do this, then letter sometimes is loose. Ba, ba, ma. It's not as solid as with the smile like ba, ba, ma. So this was the way of making it light. And how to make letter heavy? To make the letter heavy, we need to raise the back of our tongue. So the back of our tongue will rise And inshallah, by doing that, the letter will become heavy. Look at this, the tongue has become a curved shape. Yeah, look at this tongue. This is flat, flat. Fir'aun, Fir'aun, say it, Fir'aun. You will see your tongue, this part of tongue is playing no role. But when you say, Astaghfirullah, you will realize that the tongue, this part of tongue is getting raised. Okay, then the last thing we've done was the, uh, the Over there, there are three areas from where nine letter comes. We've seen that, that at comes ta and dal and ta. Now you need to pay attention, my brothers. We've done this before, but we're just quickly revising to understand one important thing in this one. That uh, ta and dal and ta. You see, this is dal, this is ta, and this is ta. What's the difference? No difference. The only difference is the back of the tongue is rising. If we do not raise the back of our tongue, then we will not say ta, we will end up saying ta. The, the difference between ta and ta is the raising of the tongue. So we have to be careful and we must raise the back of our tongue. Otherwise, we will turn this ta into ta. The name of these letters, these are also called nat'iya. Nat'iya. Because they're like a... They, uh, Because the place they come from is, is near to that place. If you see, there are lines on the palate. It's, it's like a ditch. It's like a hole kind of a thing. So this is where it comes from. So the name, then these letters, like we've done, uh, the letters which come from throat, halq, are called huruful halqiya. These letters are called huruful nat'iya. Nat'iya. Okay. Moving to the next one. Now, in this one, we've done that the tongue is resting behind the two lower teeth. And this sound comes zzz, az, iz, uz. So za comes from here. Za has got three names we said before. Zai, za, and zai. But we say za here, inshallah. And seen also comes from the same place. We say as, 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 as. See, there's no difference between them in terms of tongue. But when we come to this letter, as, Os. This also comes from the same place, but what's happening is the back of the tongue is raising. Look at these, this scene and look at this, sorry, this uh, swad, look at this swad. The tongue, the back of the tongue is, is raised and this tongue is in the curve shape. So the sound becomes heavy. Once again, if we don't know swad is the second letter of that uh, phrase. That majmua. If we don't know, then maybe we will recite our seen and swad same. So we wanna say sa imuna. We will say sa imuna, yeah, which is incorrect. We have to say swad as swad and seen as seen. And what do we do? We said as I sorry, I beg your pardon. This is us us the back of the tongue. is raised. This was us. You see, it's a, this is coming from the same place. Us, us, and us. They all are coming from the same place. Only difference is the back of the tongue, which must be raised. And this is another thing. Some people, as we said before, some people think that to make the letter heavy, you don't have to raise the back of your tongue. But even if you have to, you have to round the lips, which is wrong. If we, if we round the lips when we are saying this letter, the name of the letter is Sod, sod, sod. But if we add, if we round the lips, we will add wow, and we will say sod, 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 which is wrong. There should not be a rounding of lips because this will add the voice sound of wow. And then this is the last uh, place of articulation from the tongue. From there, three letters come. 
One come tha, how does tha come? You stick the tongue a little bit out and the upper two teeth, bottom of upper two teeth will come and touch the tongue. This is where it's come as, as now, if we become lazy and we leave the tongue inside of mouth, we will end up saying as, 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 seen, how does seen come? Tongue is laying down, resting. In this one, we raise the tongue, it comes a little bit out. If we don't do this, then we will make us and us same. And another letter comes from the same place is as, as. Same thing, tip of the tongue out, upper two uh, teeth are coming down and the bottom edge is sitting on the tongue is as. Now look at this one. Of this one and that one, only difference is the back of the tongue raised, whereas in this of, there's no back of the tongue raised, it's flat. This is a raised. So if we don't carefully raise it, we will change the word. So we will say avalimuna, we will say avalimuna, which is wrong. So tongue should not be out too much, tongue should not be inside, both are wrong. It's, it has to be a little bit out. This was our lesson eight. Lesson number nine is the final lesson today for the. Makhraj, inshallah, we will finish all the makharij. There will be no makharij left after that, bismillah ta'ala. So the letters of lips. So letters of, uh, how many uh, points are there for of articulation over there? This is two. Both lips, letters which come from both lips and letters which come from only lower lip. We will see what comes from where. So from both lips, three letters come. Ba. Meme and wow. Ba comes from here. When the, this look at this definition first, wet part of both lips. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything perfect. Our lips, if we see the outer area is dry and the inner area is wet. This letter comes from the moist area. Our, both of our lips meet on the inner side. So the both wet area, moist areas are meeting, not the dry parts. So we will say, Ab, ib, ub. Try saying saying that, brothers, behind the closed mic. Inshallah, it'll be helpful. Ab, ib, ub. Make a deliberate effort that you are uh, uh, touching you both of your lips on the on the wet area, not the dry area. Now try in the dry area and see how the sound becomes. It'll become ab, ab. First of all, your tongue will get stuck. Sorry, your uh, lips will get stuck. You will have to force themselves to part them again. Sound will become very heavy. Ba is not a heavy word. So you say ba, 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 ab, ab, ab. It has heaviness, whereas ba is not from Pusadifton. Ba is from light letters. We touch it from the inside. Uh, both lips touch each other on the wet part. And we say ab, ab. Ab. Ba is also the letter which has got a quality of bouncing. So when we say like this, Ab, Ab, they're bouncing. Yeah, this is called Qalqala. We will come to that, inshallah. This is called Qalqala, Ab, Ab, Ab. So when you touch the, you see, when two things are naturally, think of, I think in another way, if two things which are moist, which are wet, they touch each other, when they uh, do part from each other, then it will be a little bit slow because there was some substance, there's some moisture which is sticking them together. So when you say, ab, ab, so there is definitely some bounce involved in that business. Wallahu alam. So this is ab, ib, ub. Now, mean. Mean comes from both lips as well, but mean comes from different place. Mean comes from meeting of both dry areas. So you see, my brother, if in ba we have made a mistake and touched the both dry parts, then we would be knocking the door of the mean and expecting the bar to come out, which is not going to happen. SubhanAllah. This is mm, 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 the sound like in English you say, the uh, sound of M. M, M. So this is um, im, um. It's not, you don't touch the uh, wet area as you do it for bar. Let's try and see what happens if you do that. So it will become um, im, um. Um, um, there is a kalkala, there's a bounce coming if you touch the wet part. Um, um, whereas if you touch to the dry part, um, um, there's no bouncing. Ba has got a bounce naturally. So ba is coming from there and bounce is coming. Alhamdulillah, ba, bounce should be there in the ba, but there should be no bounce in the mean. So if we touch mean from the wet part, then maybe we will come up with the bounce as a result. So we will touch the dry part. We'll say, um, im, 
אום, אם, אם, אום. Now there's another thing that we've seen in noon as well, that meme, half of the meme comes from the mouth and half of the meme comes from the nose. As we can see in the first picture on the right hand side, it shows with the red arrows and the blue arrows. So for example, the letter is meme, meme. Yeah, now how do I know it comes from nose or not? I'll close my nose, I'll close my nose. Let's say again, then inshallah, hear it out brothers, inshallah. Meme, meme. Me. You see, my sound is not coming 100% out because I'm blocking the, 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 the uh, exit of the sound. I'm blocking the, my nostrils, so my nose is closed. So I only have my 50% of the area left for the pronunciation of that letter. And if I don't close it, the letter will be like that. Meme, meme. So half of the meme is coming, is coming from mouth and half of the meme coming from the nose. Next letter is wow. As in English, you say, wow, the same thing, wow. But in English, you, when you say, wow, you don't raise the back of the tongue. Whereas in Arabic, you raise the back of the tongue. Wallahi, wallahi, wal fajri, wal fajri, wallahi. So back of the tongue will rise. The lips will become round. You have to make the lips round. So once they become round and the back of the tongue is raised, this is how wow comes. Wow, wow, wallahi, 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 wa, we, wu, wa, we, wu. I hope this was clear. We'll come back to it again. Not a problem if there's any issue, inshallah. And the fourth uh, letter, which comes from lips, is coming from lower lip, meeting the upper, uh, the bottom edge of upper two teeth. How? Look, this is how. Inshallah, upper two teeth will come and sit on the wet part of the lower lip, which is the wet part from where Ba comes. So you will not say Fa and touch your two teeth on the outer side. So when you will be reciting, people will see your two teeth coming out. Yeah? And this will sound, so it will be a uh, Af, af, whereas inside it is af, af, af. You see, when we say from the correct place, we say the letter and sound almost gets stopped. But if we put our upper two teeth on the outer side of the lips and then say sound perhaps would be like this. Af, af, af. So if sound is continuously running, too much running, so it's af is not right. It is af, af, af either. Af ida, af ida. When you say af ida, af ida, this is not correct. So the upper two teeth will touch the lower lip on the wet side and we'll say af, af, af. Okay, so this was tongue and lips and halk. So halk, tongue, and lips, three areas done. We said there are five articulation areas, areas of articulation. Out of them, three are specific, two are approximate. We have discussed before as well. Specific means where you can pinpoint the place where it's coming from. The beginning of the tongue, the dry area of the lip, the, the moist area of the lip, side of the uh, tongue, tip of the tongue, lower throat, middle throat. This is specific. You can mention where it is coming from. Whereas, so once again, there are five areas of articulation. Among them, three are specific. And we have seen what are specific where you can pinpoint. Two are approximate. Approximate means then you can only guess. You could say it is coming from there, but you cannot pinpoint the exact starting point and ending point. You cannot say it is coming from the middle or it's coming from the end or it is coming from right side or it's coming from left side. So these, this, this is called approximate. We will see what are the approximate areas and what letter comes from there, inshallah. Approximate has got two parts, two areas. One is empty area of, ma uh, of mouth and throat, which is in Arabic called al-jawf. So this is al-jawf. Al-jawf means empty area. From there, it's only one point of articulation. So there's, you could say it's only one room. And in one room, three letters are living. So let's see what is this room and uh, what letters are living. There. So you see this first picture on the right hand side, this whole hollow gap, the white thing, like a smoke. This is where these three letters come from. These three letters come from here. They are, they are all, they are, the whole air is filled up here. 
and then these three letters are coming. This is one reason that these letters are also called al huruful hawaiya. Why are they called huruful hawaiya? Because when we uh, recite them, the mouth is filled with air. Uh, they are also called uh, uh, jawfiya. Jawfiya because they're coming from jawf, that's why. So this was alif, it comes from this area and it comes out of our mouth. We just open our mouth. And for example, you say the word like it is written here, la, la. What happened? The sound is coming out, the air is coming. As soon as it reaches the lip, you open them wide upwards. La, la. Like you say, ah, ah. So you open up your lip. This is how this kambiani you open your mouth in alif and your tongue is in a resting position. See, tongue is not raised. Okay, what about wow? Wow, which comes from jawf, is a different, which the, from the wow, which comes from the lips we have seen in the previous uh, slides. That wow has got haraka, yeah? So we, wa, wu. If you see that letter, that letter, your lips are playing the role in this, and your tongue is playing the role. But there's nothing coming from your throat or the empty area. Whereas this one, you see right hand picture, it's all filled up with smoke, sort of. So this all white thing is where the wow is coming from. That's why we cannot say wow is coming from here, or wow is coming from there, or wow is coming from the bottom, or wow is coming from the end. It is coming from the whole area. What do we do? We round our lips when we are pronouncing wow. So this will be, for example, it will be no. Lu, ju. If you say that, my brothers, you will realize that the sound of O is starts somewhere from your throat and it's coming all the way out without stopping at any particular point. So it's nu, ju, mu, lu, o. So that was wow. Now this is yeah. This ya is also the ya which is maddiya. Maddiya means it has got no haraka. So alif, wow, and ya, these ones, the ones that come from the jawf, they are sakin. They are not mutaharrika. There is no patha, dhamma, kasara, or zayzawar pesh on them. So the kalima ya, when we call ya Muhammad, ya Rajul, ya Walad. So we say ya. This ya is not this one. This ya. What I'm saying, ya walad, is uh, yeah. This is too far. That's the shajaria one. We have to go so many slides back. But I hope it, where the jim and sheen comes from. Jim, sheen, and ya. We said they come from when the middle of the tongue rises up towards the palate, but there's some gap from that. That ya come, which is used in ya walad, ya rajul. Ya Muhammad, Ya Zaid, Ya Harun, that's the Ya. But this Ya is the Ya with the Sukun on that. So for example, if there's a word, Qila, so Qaf has got Kasara and after that there's a Ya with the Sukun. Qila, this is the Ya which is coming from the Jawf and this is what we are selling. This is not the Ya which has got Haraka. Is this clear, my brothers? This is not the Ya which has got Haraka. They both come from different places. If it is clear, please tell me. So the other Ya, for example, in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun. So that Ya, both of those Ya, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, they both are Mutaharrika. Whereas this ya, what we are uh, studying is this one. For example, for example, lakum di nukum waliyadin, di nukum, dalia di, di, di nukum, di nukum. So this is ya madhya, di nukum, di nukum. And you say allazi, allazi. So in the ya in allazi is this one. Allazi, because the ya in allazi has got no haraka on it. It's allazi. Fadhalika allazi yadu'u al-yateen. So I hope this is clear that which ya is this one. Alhamdulillah. Okay, and yeah, this is for wow. We've already done that, that the whole area is filled up. 
and welcome some of the rounding of the lips. Now, this is in one slide, all three letters of the mud we can see, which comes from al -Jov. So alif, ya, and wow, as we can see, they all come from the same area, the whole area of the halaq and the mouth. The difference is, there's some differences. When alif is coming from the opening of lips wider, ah, uh, ja, ba, whereas this ya, the tongue will rise from the middle. So we say, ni, say, ni, ni, ni. And you will see as soon as your tongue has pronounced noon and it's going towards ya, the middle of your tongue will rise. So it's ni. And for wow, as we said, it will come from the same place, the whole area of jauf. The back of the tongue will rise. But one more thing we need to do in this one, which we don't do in alif or ya, and that is rounding the lips. It is important to round the lips. If we don't round the lips, when Dhamma, any page or wow is there, then our recitation will become majhul. Majhul means it will be not correct. So we have, uh, I think, in, not in this class, in other class, we are doing Surah Fatiha. So we have discussed that sometimes we hear people say, Alhamdulillah. Al yani, we are not discussing the mistakes of Ha here, let's focus on Dal. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We say what? Alhamdu, do, 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 do. This is correct. Dal with Dhamma is do, Alhamdu, Alhamdu is D U. If it's you, you want to say in English, do, do, it's not do. Do is D O U, do, do. This is not do, this is do. Likewise, we have to be careful that when we say Dhamma or we say wow, then when we are pronouncing Pesh or Dhamma or wow, we must round our lips, otherwise letter will not become beautiful and it'll, it'll, it'll come wrong. Okay, the fifth area from the areas of articulation which we have been studying from long time is Khayshum. Khayshum is also the second in the areas which are muqaddara, not specific. So we've seen al-halq, yani throat, Al-Lisan, Yani Tongue, Shafatan, Yani Lips. Those were three areas and they are specific where you can say the sound is coming from this part on the middle or the right or end. And then the two uh, other ones are Al-Jawf and Al-Khayshum, which are Muqaddara, where you cannot pinpoint. So we've seen Al-Jawf, so we cannot pinpoint. This is the whole hollow area, the gap of uh, throat and mouth from where the letter is coming. We do not, we cannot pinpoint this to say this is coming from the top or the bottom. Likewise, this is the fifth one. It is called Al Khayshum. English name is nasal passage. There's, let's say there's one room in this area and two letters come. We will see what two letters are. Brother Shreb, is, is Ya considered Madhi only when it comes after a Kasara or after a uh, Ya will never come after Fatah, my brother. Ya will never come after a Fatah. Think of any word where Fatah and after Fatah is Ya. Ya cannot come after. How will you make? You cannot make a sound. It's not easy. Ya always comes after Kasara. And Alif always comes after Fatha. So Ya always comes. Ya, before Ya is Kasara and before Alif is Fatha. Remember it like this, it will be easy. Before Ya is always Kasara. I, okay. This I, when you say I, this is not, uh, we, what did we say first of all? The two things here. One, this is Hamza, this is not Alif. This is one thing. And what do we, what did we say? Fatha, this is Hamza, this is not Alif. You understand? This is I. This is different. We are talking about Ya, and before the Ya coming is Fatha and Kasa. This is different thing. And I usually is ayu, ayu. It's not ya only, it's ya mushaddada. Mushaddada means there's one letter with the sukoon and after that it is, there is a haraka. So from the nasal passage, two letters come, which are al meem and al noon. We have seen this before as well. Meem, half comes from the mouth and half comes from the nose. We have, uh, Seeing it just now that how if we close our nose, then the meme will not come completely. Same is with the noon. So we say noon, noon. 
but we uh, hold our nostrils. No, no, no. It will be like that. Is it clear, brothers? And another thing is, brother Swayb, what you are talking about this ya is yaul lean, not yaul madda. There are two lean letters, wow and ya. Yeah. I'll, uh, for example, in the Quran, I'll tell you. This is yao lean, and this yao lean is not yao madda. Yao lean is not madda. Like, for example, min khauf, khauf. So it's wow. In the Quran, you in everywhere in Arabic language, you will find before wow, it will be always dhamma. Only in the case of when wow or ya is lean, and when they are lean, they are lean if before wow or ya is a fatha, then this is lean. So let's put it in a different way for the ease of understanding. We said yaul madda, yeah? So one is yaul madda or wawul madda. One is mutaharrika, yeah? And you could say another is lean. This yaul madda, we have seen yaul madda. Yaul madda will never have fatha before kasra, yeah, before ya, always have a kasra. Sorry, internet is just a little bit uh, problematic today, subhanAllah. Brother Swayb, are you satisfied? Or shall we go in further detail? It is important that you, you are satisfied. This is Ya'ul Lean, not Ya'ul Madda. We have discussed Ya'ul Madda. In the slide, it was Ya'ul Madda. It was not Ya'ul Lean, yeah? Alhamdulillah. Ya'ul Lean is different. Inshallah, it'll come ahead. Okay, what is next here? Don't think there's anything here. Anyway, once again, look at this is Al-Mim and Noon. They both are in one place. Now, some people say Gunna is a, uh, how, yani, Gunna is uh, what? Gunna is a Sifa. But Ulama has said Gunna is a complementary sound for Noon and Mim. But when it becomes Sifa, when it, because some people say in Sifa also Gunna comes. So how come it is coming in Makhrej? Wallahu alam, I think this is the argument. Wallahu alam. So in Makhrej, because Mim and Noon, as we have seen, Mim, noon. We are not able to pronounce without nose. So this is why it is a sound of the letter, which is a, a built-in in noon and meme. But when it comes to sifa, then gunna means the maratibul gunna, any the shortening or lengthening of gunna. Yeah, then and gunna also has if there's a uh, heavy word before gunna, the gunna will be heavy. If there's a light word before gunna, then gunna will be light. So that is the part of Sifa from that angle, characteristics from that angle. Right now, it is in the chapter of Makharis. This was, brothers, our end of lesson today. Because uh, we have done how many letters? We have done, yeah, four. So, we've four and five, six, seven, and eight and nine. This is enough for today, I think because uh, we need to practice this as well. And when I say practice, I don't mean class practice only. I mean, uh, it's better that brothers should try at home as well to practice. This is an important chapter. Once this is gone, then we will not be coming back to it uh, because, you know, Alhamdulillah, we revise too much. Every lesson we revise, we give good enough time for the revision. But once we are out of this chapter, then we will not go back to revise it, like we don't revise other things now. So this was the last uh, any point of us discussing Makharis in some sort of detail. And another thing is, brothers, uh, look at the screen, brothers Suhaib. Sorry, sometimes this is hidden because of this uh, toggle bar. Let's see if the toggle bar can be moved. Look, what is written in red there? Mutaharrik wa lean. Mutaharrik wa lean. Gherul maddiya means what? When it's not maddiya. So when it's not maddiya, then what it could be? It could be mutaharrik, as you see, mutaharrik and lean. So when we are pronouncing, brother Ashad, I'll come to you one second. When we are pronouncing ya, uh, sorry, wow, which is not maddiya, yeah, which has got a haraka at the top, like say wallahi, then this is how the tongue will be. This is how the tongue will be for mutaharrika and also for lean. So mutaharrik and lean are the different than the wow ul maddiya. On the picture, it's written gair maddiya, gair maddiya. So I hope, Brother Suhaib, you are, alhamdulillah, satisfied. Yes, Brother Rashad, what is your request? You don't request us. You just tell us what is it, inshallah, we will try to do. You are our beloved brother.
Okay, well, we have a brother, brother Arshad. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, subhanAllah al -Azim. You see, brother's class starts with what, 50, 60 people, and then it goes down to this, and then we have to merge the classes. If we start taking exams, maybe half of the brothers will not turn uh, up next time. They say, yeah, it's exam, or oh, forget it, it's difficult. But we understand brothers have got families, work, many things to uh, take care of. That's why we just patiently, we don't even ask you for uh, attendance. No, no, I appreciate you asking, understand. So we don't even ask for attendance from brother's class, but sister's class, there is a regular attendance that they have to attend the class. There are courses in which, which is said, if you don't have, if you don't have an 80% attendance, then you will not get certificate. Maybe you will be removed from the course. But brothers, we say, okay, alhamdulillah, khalas. Brothers are coming, let them come. Whatever little or more time they can give, let them give time and let them learn whatever they learn. So testing exam is not a problem. Okay, we'll think about it. If other brothers do, other brothers agree to this. So please uh, say yes or no. If you say yes, it means you yes, you are, you are agreeing for the test. If you say no, then you are on the no side. We will see what is the any majority opinion, inshallah. You see, my brothers, any between so many brothers, they're just. Uh, Four have, have said yes. Others are thinking what to do. Oh, brother Mohsin Chaudhary, Barakallah. Brother Mohsin is saying, everybody's saying one yes. I will say two yes. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, brother Hassan. Where is our another beloved brother? Brother Ayman, yes. Okay, brother Hassan Farah. Yeah, mashallah, this brother is a lovely brother. Every class, mashallah, is present. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. I mean, okay, brothers, we will try to have some exam. You want one time or you want it every time? Yani, or how do you want it? You want it in every class or you want it just once in a month or so like that? Brother Tayyab Idris, yes, mashallah. Once a week or once a month, brother Mohsin Chaudhary? Just right week or month, it will tell us that once a week, once what? Okay, khalas, we'll do once a month, inshallah. So it'll be easy then. It will not take much time, maybe any, just a little bit of revision, inshallah. Okay, inshallah, we will do that. Not to worry. Not to worry, inshallah. Inshallah. Barakallah, fiqh brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. I mean, people really, shaitan winds us so much, my brothers. We all are so weak. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help every time. And we should read the stafar every time. I was reading somewhere, I heard somewhere that, you know, like I'll try to expand on what I have heard and what I then just, subhanAllah. That every single moment we are making decisions in our life. Decision is not to change the job, to open a business for a marriage, to attend a, a college and university. Decision is everything. You step out of the house, you go from the right hand or you go left hand, it's a decision. You go out, eat from this shop or eat from that shop, is a decision. You get up in the morning, now you recite Quran half a page or you don't recite Quran half a page. These are all decisions. So what I have heard is, or I've read is, if one is in the practice of saying, astaghfirullah, 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 often, then what happens is in the decisions, when he's making, going to make decision, help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And he makes the right decision. So maybe somebody thinks, you know what, let's, let's listen to this song. It's been a very long time. I haven't heard. Come on, khalas. He clicked it. But if the help of Allah is with him, if the hidayah is with him, then he will not go towards it. He'll say, no, no, khalas, I don't want it. This is, I don't want to get into that. I have, it was very difficult for me to come out of it. I don't want to go back into this habit again. So just reading Astaghfar is, has got so much benefit. There's one thing which you might have heard, my brothers. Yani, uh, there was a man who was uh, in the masjid. And uh, the caretaker of the masjid said to him, Khalas, Sheikh, Salatul Isha finished. Everybody's gone. I need to close the mosque. You also go out. But he said, I'm a traveler. I don't have a house. I was just passing by from this town. And I stayed here. And can you not let me stay in the masjid? And the, the caretaker said, no, 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 it is not allowed. The committee members say something else, something like that. I'm just making up. So there was another person sitting there. He said, you know what? Let him come with me. 
So he said to that person that you come with me and stay with me tonight. You have to travel tomorrow. You go tomorrow. If masjid is getting close, don't worry about it. So he took him to his place. He was a baker, Habbaz, making his bread. So he was, he, he was living in his shop. So he was making his thing and he said to that person, you lie down in the corner, take rest in the morning you go. The man who came as who was a traveler saw him is working, making his dough, doing this, doing that. Every time he's doing it, what all he's doing is his lips are saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. So he's doing his work by saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. So the man asked him that, brother, you are reciting so much Astaghfirullah. Have you seen any benefit of that? He said, any, there is no dua which I made which is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of my supplications are accepted. This is one supplication, I'm still waiting for that. So otherwise my astaghfar, I read so much and my all of my du'as are accepted. So the man said, okay, what is that du'a? Subhanallah. He said, I have made du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I've heard about a big sheikh, Imam Ahmad Hanbal. And he lives in such a far away town that, ya Allah, I want to meet this sheikh. What the other person said, that the, the, the traveler, he cried. He said, SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wanted to go to him? Allah has brought that person to you. I am Imam Ahmad Hanbal. And he was Imam Ahmad Hanbal who was passing by. He stayed there. And SubhanAllah, look how he ended up in the, 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 the shop, in the house, shop come house of the khubbaz of the baker. And that baker was the one who always recite Astaghfirullah. And this was his dua. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is any uh, listen to his dua. Imagine my brother. Astaghfar, just hang on with it. Every this is easy. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Yeah, put reminders on your phone. Maybe 20, 30, every time the bell goes, you think, oh, it was astaghfirullah. Reach some astaghfirullah. You will see the benefits, my my brother. You will see the benefits. Coming back to our um, lesson. Whosoever wants to go, feel free because lesson is over and there'll be no new thing coming. I, I, I understand some brothers are busy. So if you want to go, you can go. Whoever wants to practice, please feel free. We will practice. And whoever wants to stay back and don't want to practice, but just want to listen, that's fine, no problem. One more request. The class is starting at 11.30 US time, but posted as 12.30. Okay, my brothers, because in America, there are, I think there are more than two time frames. I think this is the New York time, which was posted in the group. If I'm not making a mistake, I will uh, request them to change. Which city you are in, brother? Brother Sadiq? Okay. So I think your time difference between UK is the class starting 11.30, but I see it has, okay, four hours. Okay, we will, inshallah, uh, uh, this chat will be seen by admin, not a problem. Inshallah, they will sort it. No problem. Uh, I'm sorry I'm for the inconvenience, whatever it has caused to you. Barakallahu Okay, brothers. So, la brothers, jazakumullah khairan for you, brothers, to coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you. The, the best thing you can do is, my brothers, to teach others. We have read the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the beginning of this course. The best among you are who teaches Quran and learn. Or learn and teach. So this is the best thing. And this is a sadqa jariya. You learn something from here, sit with your children, sit with your brother, sister, friend, just share one thing with them. For the whole of the life, they will learn and they will teach somebody, Bismillah, we all will get reward for that. Okay, brothers, so who wants to practice? Raise your hands, please. Brother Tayyab Idris, Brother Mohsin Chaudhary, Tamam. So we will go to these letters which we have done today. Very, very easy, inshallah. Brother, so brother Taib uh, please start. Okay. Am I to read the letter? Okay. 
Say like this, put a Hamza. This is how we practice as well in, in our own houses. Just put a Hamza with Fatha, Kasra and Gamma as it is given in the picture. And whichever letter yeah. we practice, put a Sukun and put it after this. So we'll say Ab. If it was we were practicing Noon, we will say An. And we will see where is the An. An. See the tongue is touching the top palate, An. And then we may perhaps want to say Ak. Uh, Ak. So where the sound is stopping, where the cough is coming right at the end. So this is why you say ab. When you say ab, your tongue, your, your lips should touch the wet part as it is supposed to touch. If they touch wet part, then alhamdulillah, you are doing it correct. So bismillah. No. You said, brother, ab, 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 ab. Mashallah. And the next screen, this one. For this one, you will touch the dry part of your lips. Okay. Um. 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 Outer area. Um. Ba, it was inner area. Ab. Ab. <laughs> this is outer area. Um. No. Um. Um. In, um. Excellent, brother. And this one? Yes, sir. Ow. Ew. Ooh. Okay, and this one? Of. If. Oof. Mashallah. And now these are Jof ones. So say, Nu, he, ha. No, he, ha. Yeah, it will uh, elongate uh, he a little bit more. No, okay. he, no. ha. No, he, ha. This was a little bit more. Say, like, when only a dhamma, you will say no. You will quickly say no, no. But there's a vowel, okay. you say no. No, he, ha. No, he, ha. Excellent, brother. And this is al -meem. So you could say, we've said, already said, um, you could say, an, in, un. An, in, un. Close your nose and say it. Close the nostrils. An, in, you see, now this was, this is, I want you to experience. Now you see it is coming from the nose. So now, inshallah, you'll always remember for noon and meme, half of the sound comes from nose. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fiqh, brother. Uh, who is no, next, my brother? Barakallah fiqh. Brother Iman Khoraini? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, So these letters of the uh, lips. Ab, Ib, Ub. Mashallah. This one? Am, Im, Um. Excellent. This one? Au, Iw, U. This one? Af, if, uf. Excellent. And this is nu, he, ha. No. No. Say nu, he, ha. No. Excellent, brother. Nu, he, ha. Nu, he, ha. Excellent. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Jazakallah khair. Brother Sadiq. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam to the Bakadawi, brother. Alhamdulillah. Yes, brother, this one. This is screen. Ab, Ib, Ob. This one? Am, Im, Om. MashaAllah, this one? Au, Ev, Ob. Sorry, O. It's okay. This one? Yeah. Af, If, Of. Correct. And this one is nu he ha. Nu he ha. Correct. Mashallah tabarakallah, brother. Well done. 
Today's was very, very easy, alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fi jazakallah khair. Brother Mohsin Chaudhary. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallahu khairan for your timing. May Allah give you reward abundantly. Ameen. Barakallahu fi jazakallahu brother. Read this one, brother. Inshallah. Ab, ib, ub. Mashallah. And this one? Am, im, um. Mashallah. Au, iu, u. And this one? Af, if, uf. Excellent. And this one is? Nu, hi, ha. Nu, hi, ha. Yeah, it's only alif, vowel, and yeah, with just a little bit of lengthening. So it's very easy. It's nothing. Uh, Difficult in that. Barakallahu feek, brothers. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much for your coming. Inshallah, we'll see you uh, next Sunday, same time. And uh, thank you very much once again for coming. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam.